Kathy here from Eclectic Images. Thanks for joining me. Okay, today I would like to do a card for you using the Floral Bouquet stamp set and also the new Flower Pot stamp set, both from Eclectic Images stamps. So here's the card that we're going to make. So it's using the, creating a bunch of flowers within the pot and then creating quite a nice textured background to go with it. Cool. Okay, our products today, our stamps, are going to be the flower bouquet set and the macrame pot from the flower pot set using some some greetings from either the mum and dad set or the um, thank you set and I'll also be tucking in some flowers from one of our little flower center sets our inks will be some Versamark for embossing some Versafine Claire I'm going to go with purple tones for this one so I've chosen Monarch for the Versafine Claire and Spring Pansy and Purple Hydrangea in the Versa uh, Magic, and also some tea leaves in the Versa Magic for our foliage. I'll be doing some embossing with the Couture Creations, and I think this is tan, pastel tan, and I think that's about it. Oh, their cardstock will be using a mixture of cotton blend uh, for our stamping and our backing, but also using the uniquely creative 12 by 12 cardstock cut back to size of course um, just to show you how beautiful that cardstock is okay let's get started all right so first up i'm going to do some oh i just want to show you something else i've normally kept my stamps in tins um, but i'm finding that <laughs> is it a problem i'm getting too many stamps i keep overflowing the tins so i've discovered and a lot of you are possibly already using this, the um, in Spotlight, and I think it's a Frenchville product, uh, a case that you have these little, a carry case that all these little colored plastic drawers fit into. And they're really cool, either for just being able to store your stamps on the acetate they come on, or even better, laminate your labels and then sit your stamps on top. You do have to trim, um, trim it back a bit to make it fit into there. But that way, you've clearly got your label to show what's in that set and then the stamps with it. And I think that's going to be pretty good. The only thing to be careful of is these don't keep out the light, being a transparent plastic. Therefore, you'll need to keep your containers where they're not going to be hit by, in particular, sunlight. So you may need to keep your whole um, container of stamps in a cupboard or... Um, under a table or something like that just to keep it out of the light. That's just one caution to be aware of. Keep them out of the light. But other than that, I can easily fit two of the bigger stamp sets in here and it's got a fair bit of capacity. And you can see I'm already sticking odd ones on the lid too, which is not good. But <laughs> I think that's gonna work really well both for storage at home, but also storage for traveling. They can also be used too. Now that Catherine Pooler is, uh, her ink pads are not coming in little sets and you're buying the small ones individually you can fit eight little ink pads in one of these as well okay now let's get on with our card making so we've got some cotton blend to stamp onto and I've already got some stamps loaded into my stamp press I'm just going to ink up the pot to start with I'll come back to doing the greeting later because I'll use that with a different color so I'm going to use the spring pansy for our pot and I'm going to ink it quite thoroughly so we get a good colour on it. Now your Versamagic chalk inks are so lovely and soft that even though I'm doing a fair bit of inking, this is still going to be a, a gentle image. So over we go, press down, give it a minute to absorb into the card, being a pigment ink. Now. If I want to, because I've got it in my stamp press, I can stamp again where that hasn't taken completely. Or because it's a soft chalk ink, I could just leave it and it would just look like the pot is a little bit uh, ragged. But I'm thinking I'll actually just give that an extra push there and that'll probably pick up on that bit. The beauty of using a stamp press is that you can do that. You can re-stamp if you're not happy with the first image. All right, I'll take that little pot off and give it a clean and pop it back on its sheet. Now we get to stamp some flowers in there. Actually, I might do the greeting first while I've got it loaded in the platform. So with the greeting, I'm going to do that with the Versafine Clear Monarch. Now, another nice thing about the stamp press, I often find that I could make a beautiful card and then just when I get to stamping the greeting at the end, that's when I muck it up. 
So by taking the time to put it into my stamp press, and for this one, I wanted the location of the words to be fairly strict because I've got to allow room for the tassel off the pot. So if you can see, that's going to come down a certain way. So I need to make sure that the greetings fit in underneath it. Now I do find the other nice thing about using the stamp press is I can line my stamps up there. If they're not perfect, I can actually put this over, pick them up, then come over here and just manipulate them slightly just to make sure they're sitting as straight as I want them. I've got the, because I'm using the lines from the grid there. And I do find sometimes they stick to your fingers and having a little pair of tweezers or a pokey tool just to sort of push them around. But if I've got them on the platform, I usually find I can just shift them slightly and not have to, and they, they will stay stuck to the platform so they don't stick to me instead. Okay, let's ink them up, see how we go. Okay, so versifying Claire. Little glance, make sure I've got all the words in the right order and not upside down. Push down. And I'm very happy with that inking. So now we can take it out of the platform. And we'll clean those stamps and pop them away in just a moment. Okay, let's stamp all our little flowers. So with this, we also have a new acrylic block, which is a peg block. So it's, um, well, <laughs> it's a cylinder with the part that you put the stamps on on the end there. Now I'm going to go with the hydrangea. And we'll use some Versa Magic Purple Hydrangea for this. I'm going to do the flowers first and then stamp the foliage in around. So with this, I can it fits very comfortably into your hand. So I can ink it up and stamp on and I'm not as likely to wobble with it. I'm not, I can still get a bit of ink on the backing but it doesn't happen as much. The only drawback I find is with a clear block, you can really easily see where you're stamping. Because this is longer, I have to sort of look on the side a little bit and then I can stamp it in. And we get a lovely little image there. Okay, let's ink it up again. Again, you just tap lightly, you don't press hard. Let's do one on the other side. So I want the stamen going over that way a bit. And we'll do one up the middle there. Now keeping in mind that the when we put the macrame part in, it's going to dissect the middle of that. So I'll try and bring some foliage out to the sides. And I think next we might do some little ones. So I'll bring in one from that tiny flowers set. And this I'm going to stamp in the Monarch, in the Versafine Clear, just so I can get some really dark images in there. But I don't want to have to stop and make masks of all those little flowers. So what I've done is I've just torn up some paper towel and I can actually use that. If you tear it a little bit ragged, I find that I can use that. For example, if I want a little flower peeking out of here, okay, put that in there. It can come in from just behind those flowers. Okay, so it's just saves stopping to having to make a mask. One up the top there. That might be enough for those. I don't want that dark to be overpowering. Now let's use, go back to a small block and do some of the foliage. I'm gonna add the little, I love the little gypsum one. It just is beautiful. So let's go to our tea leaves ink. But I'm not going to want the whole stem for this. So inking up and again, just masking a bit of a flower there. 
So you can see I'm not worrying, the mask isn't that accurate, but it's just enough so that now that jib tucks in behind the flowers. Let's do one out this side. And of course this card is going to turn out different every time you do it. Depending on where you place the little flowers. I think I'm going to want one out the top and right up high as well. Let's just mask there. And again I'm thinking of where the string's going to go so it's going to peek out from behind it. Okay, now some leaves. You can see I've got some gaps in there but I'll deal with that in a moment. So we could use the fern frond or I might use the medium size leaf. And let's put some out from those flowers. Again, I'm not going to want to use the whole stamp. So we just use a little bit. Now there my mask covered that up too much so I'm just going to try and ink just that leaf bit and just tap that in there. It's fairly forgiving. Let's have a leaf up the top here. Just stuck my finger in the ink pad, as you do when you're dealing with little stamps. Actually, that's going to be enough. I'm going to put the hanging frond down there, the little squiggly one, which I just love. So I'll turn my card around a bit. Let's mask that flower. And I'm going to mask the edge of the pot as well. So I'm going to put a second bit of paper towel in there and pop this down like that. Oh, how cute is that? Okay, now to fill in some of these bits. With that, I've found that the smaller leaf set, the one that's more like uh, designed to go with the rose buds, it's, very, it's quite easy just to ink just the leaf at the end or just a couple of leaves at the end and so with this we can now put a bit in there just being careful just so I'm just inking just that uh, top part I'm not inking the whole stamp and we can just sneak it in there and another one in there and so we start to fill out that foliage. Here I wasn't 100% happy over here, so we'll tuck one in there. So I'm just masking the flowers as I go. It's not 100%, so I'm just not even going to mask this time. I'm just going to tap that leaf in there just to fill that bit out. So you just keep looking for where you might need a little bit of extra foliage and just add it in. I think we do need a bit more filling in these parts here with these flowers. So let's mask there. So I'm not even trying here to get the actual shape looking like a leaf. I'm just looking at adding in a bit of colour. There we go. So that just fills it out a little bit more. Okay, I think we're ready to put on our embossing. Now, because these are pigment inks and they take a little while to dry, I've actually pre-prepared one so that we can now go straight ahead with our embossing. So here's, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, similar colours, slightly different layout of blossoms. 
um, and different words on. So this is words from the mum dad set. You are wonderful. Compared with our initial sample one that was thanks from the thank you set. And you can see they're featuring the roses in the reds. Gives quite a different look to the hibiscuses in the, the purple. Okay, but let's get on with our embossing and keep moving with this one. Okay, so that should be nice and dry. I'm going to still wipe over it with an anti-static pad. We're going to put it back into our stamp press just so I can get it exactly where I want it. And I'll take off the mum and dad greetings that we've got on there. And line up our little macrame part. So it's got a tassel at the bottom. It's designed, if I show you on the picture here, you can see, we might need a bit of a close-up map. Oh, he's on to it, thank you. You can see there's like a little diamond there where the rope is coming up to the edge of the pot and then ducking in behind it. And you've got two little knots at the bottom where the rope is going in underneath the pot. So that helps to give you an idea for how to line it up. So pop it on here, pop those bits at the edges of the pot and the little tags at the bottom. Looking to see that I'm looking fairly straight. Now, let's get our embossing station ready. So we need our catching sheet. We need our powder open ready. I've got a fine brush here for knocking off any excess bits. And I've got my Versa marking pad. So let's ink it up. Stamp and press. I usually find with Versa mark. You really can't tell on matte cardstock whether you've got the whole lot covered, so I've got to be very good with my inking and my stamping. Now we whisk it out of there. Pop it over to our catching sheet. Oh, Matthew's keeping up. This is good. And then dump on a whole lot of powder. Nice little tap. And then a little check to make sure that the grains are only where we want them. That was probably a fingerprint on that side of the card. So that's looking very good. Okay, so pop the stamp press to one side, pop your embossing powder away before you get your heat gun out. And let's see what we've got. Okay, this will make a bit of a noise. Sometimes do a little bit of a heat, especially if I'm just starting the heat gun. Do a bit of a heat from underneath just to let the gun warm up and to warm the card up. And then I'll find that the embossing goes a little bit quicker. There we go. That's a good colour for a rope. Okay. Now if I wanted to... If I wanted to actually make this look real, more realistic, I could actually reverse the stamp or reverse the card in the platform and extend that so it looked like it was coming from the top of the card. But I don't, I don't think it always needs that. I think it just hanging there is fine. Now on our sample one, I also did do a bit of edging around the base card. Uh, so that's something you can do, just wiping a bit of Versamark around. But I want to get on with this one and show you how I've done that backing card. So I've got a piece here that I've already prepared. Um, and of course, I've forgotten the name of the colour of this card. Could have been Summer Wheat, I think. So I've already run it through an embossing folder and that gives that raised look. Now what's different about this cardstock is that it's got a white core to it. I don't know whether we can see that on the camera. So the colour is on the both sides of the card, but the core is white. So that means that if we grab a bit of sandpaper, and I do have sanding blocks on the website, you can just, oh, this is going to be very loud on the camera, isn't it? Oh, dear. Okay. I won't talk in case Matthew wants to turn the music up over this bit. You can also go around the edges to distress the card, or you could do just the edges and not have it embossed. 
But how groovy is that? Now it has got little bits of sandpaper on, so I'm gonna wipe it off on my leg. Matthew won't see that on the camera. And I'll give my mat a quick wipe too because there'll be sanding stuff all over that. Okay, so now we can just start sticking things together. So I've got my Cotton Blend base card. I'll put some double-sided tape on here. Now because this is, uh, has been gone through, it's three-dimensional, so there's less card to stick to the tape, I will run a line of tape down the middle of the card as well. down there just to help hold it all in place. Okay, now before I lay it down, I'm just going to double check with it reverse how much borders did I allow myself. Okay. Move it down. Then tape on the back of our one that we've, no, not that one. Where's the one I embossed? There's the one I embossed. Tape on this one. Okay, let's look at our placement. Now I could edge that card with some ink or we can just leave it looking fairly soft. So this way we've got our feature piece, but we're laying a fair bit of that beautiful background to show through as well. So there's our layout. Of course you can change the layout as much as you like, but it's just, I liked having the small strip of card here so that it allows a fair bit of that to be seen. Now our last bits is to add some liquid pearls and stickles. So I've chosen to go with uh, rose gold for our stickles and for our pearls. I'm just going to bring up my paper pad put underneath because I do like to just test a bit of pearls where it comes out just to make sure it's not got bubbles. And I love putting the pearls onto this little jib. Now, if you try and touch the paint to the card, not so much the nozzle, it gives you a little bit more control over the size of the dots because it's good to get some really little ones and then some bigger ones in there. And of course you don't exactly, the jib gives you a guide, but you don't exactly have to follow it. Now we could put a few extra bits up here if we wanted to. Uh, I've got a little bit of a smudge on the card there, so I'm gonna add some little pearls just on there. And so we might add a few others. That's probably enough. Oh, I said that's enough. I usually keep going until, uh, <laughs> until I've done too much. Okay, now our stickles. Let's add some stickles to the centers of our flowers. You could add it over the macrame. We could add a little bit just maybe in the bottom ropes, just to see we might have, when you're making the macrame pot, you might have put some little gems in there. And again, I think that is enough. I'm putting the lid on and backing away. Wow. Okay, so that's our card for today. I hope you like that. Uh, a little bit of inspiration there. I'll just bring it forward onto the black so that Matthew can get a good shot of it for us. And just a little hint as to how you can get over where you do do maybe a little accidental smudge. You know, not many of us are perfect with our card making, so it's good to have a few little tricks up your sleeve of how to uh, change things up a bit. All right, thank you for joining me today for that one. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you'll have a go. Don't forget, have a look on our 
website for the stamps and the, there's a special price if you're buying the flower bouquet and the flower pot set together. A lot of you will probably already have all the tiny stamps and just see what, enjoy putting together different combinations of flowers and also using them on different things like um, the ladies, the Venetian masks, um, the, the ladies bike with them coming out of it, flowers coming out of that. So have, a, have fun playing with these stamps and I'll love to see what you create. Thanks for watching.